January the 18th, 2025. As you're looking at images of our sun, I'm going to play this forward. First, the center area that's dark. You see it curving around here. That's a coronal opening in the sun, and it's been keeping our solar wind uh, elevated around on the Earth here, guys, around 500 uh, kilometers per second. But right here is the large sunspot that we watched turn and is getting very close to being almost directly Earth-facing. It's in the southern hemisphere of the sun, but remember, so is the ecliptic of our planet. Let's play this through, and we'll take a look at it and a couple of other images. But the sunspot is right here in the very bright area. And you're going to see in the last few frames coming up right in here, Bam, directly earth facing, almost directly. It would be closer if it was in the center of the sun because these are geolocated uh, images. But to uh, guys, very powerful. I think it's uh, probably peaked out at a 1.7 or X 1.7 flare. Again, earth facing. So we're going to have a geomagnetic storm. It, there's not any information up yet. It just is happening again. In these last few frames, let me pull this in here right there you start to see some explosions look at that you can see all the energy coming our way now this sunspot is called 4341 it, re it went around the sun and has returned a smaller area here 4346 and below it 4345 but this is the one that's giving us the problems right now now, I said 1.7, but it was still climbing. They have it now as an X1.8, very close to an X2 flare. And you can see that we were getting smaller flares and buildups as it came around the sun, excuse me, as it turned around and came earth-facing on the sun. And just today, you can see the activity all of a sudden, bam, it just was more than it could handle. And the Earth-Sun connectivity point is not on that side of the sun. It's on the right side. So... We're going to have to deal with this particular sunspot for quite a while. Again, right here, it's registering as an X 1.8. Again, it just happened, has not had time to start coming back down yet. Sometimes you'll see these happen two or three in a row. We're going to keep an eye on it. Now, looking at the current conditions, we are coming out of a higher solar wind speed than what we're seeing here. And this is how it normally is around three to 320 kilometers per second but 566 is very powerful but it has been and for the last few days in the 700s because of that solar or excuse me that coronal opening in the middle of the sun allowing that solar wind this way guys and i've read this before in older videos but uh, it says who cares about these cosmic rays and that's what we're going to be dealing with with increased solar wind and the effects of this x flare but it says they are surprisingly down to earth. It's a form of space weather. They can alter the chemistry of the atmosphere, trigger lightning, and penetrate commercial airplanes. According to a study from the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, crews of aircraft have higher rates of cancer than the general population. Guys, just think about the shuttle, the astronauts, because they're exposed to it, and they don't have the atmosphere. The the, as much atmosphere protecting them as we do. Now, they also listed cosmic rays, irregular sleep habits, and chemical contaminants as leading risk factors. A number of controversial studies, there's four listed here, and this is on spaceweather.com. You can go there, scroll down to the bottom, and click on each one of these, and they're different studies. But they say these go even further, linking cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. Guys, and if I, I think that uh, you can feel these if you got a weak heart, you got a problem with your heart, and you have these type of flares. I think you feel them and becomes, uh, and it can get painful. But anyway, guys, we got to. We'll be looking for that. They have not had time to set up a coronal mass ejection model yet. The CME tracker is what they call it. But that should be up possibly within an hour. If so, I can come in. We'll look at it. We'll pause it. Look at the uh, estimated time of arrival for our planet. But when you have a flare like that, within 8.2 minutes, you have radio blackout because it travels in in two different speeds. One is because it is comprised of photons, not protons. That's in the coronal mass ejection itself. 
but the burst of light is photon energy and it travels at the speed of light. It leaves the sun in 8.2 minutes. It has reached the earth and that's 93 mile, million miles away. Also that plasma tube that we talked about with, with the earth sun connectivity point, it transfers energy every 8.2 minutes back and forth from our planet. And we're going to look at where that's at in the update with the uh, uh, CME trackers coming up as well. Uh, and what I want to do is take that information, look at the Earth Sun's connectivity point, because that sunspot that just gave us this uh, X flare is going to be traveling right across that connectivity point between our planet and the Sun. Anyway, I'm not going to draw this out any longer, guys. You've got the information. The um, again, I do these for two reasons. One, we see the pressure of these uh, type flares in the uh, following coronal mass ejection affect the tectonic plates of our planet, causes earthquakes. Not only that, it affects people. It affects our health, and that's very important too. The sun's weather also controls our weather. And just a quick look at that coronal opening, guys. Right here is where the sunspot is that just gave us that X-flare. But all of this area is clear of what's called the solar canopy or the magnetic solar canopy. And it's like an opening in the sky here on Earth. But what's happening is if you look at the loops out here, you can see where this energy is emitted from the sun, captured, and pushed back to the surface in many cases because of the magnetic canopy. But here, that is not there at the time. And so we it's this uh, particular opening or coronal opening, guys, is directly Earth-facing. So that's why we've been seeing the 700 kilometer uh, per second solar wind speed. It's just now dying down to 566. But it's going to kick back up. And the, for all you guys that feel the effects of this, it's going to continue for a few days. And it's going to have a little extra zing when that X flare gets here, but that will be in a video as soon as they get to see him. E trackers up and running guys. What they'll do is wait for some input from the satellites how to give them. They can look at how fast it's moving and uh, what exact direction, things like that. And that's important, but that info will be up just as soon as they release it, we'll get a better idea. And when you get the timing of the impact, it will tell you what side of the earth will be a, a sun facing. In other words, if the U.S. is on the night side of the sun, we won't be affected as much as the people on the day side of the sun. I remember when I think three different X flares left the sun in about two or three days, and they hit Tokyo that afternoon or in a couple of days in the afternoon around 3 o'clock, 2.45, 3 p.m. Tokyo time. And we had the Fukushima earthquake. And that's when we started discussing it, is, is putting it out worldwide that that was the problem that we're having with the solar flares. It took a couple of years for people to get in line with that, but um, maybe five years, but now it's common knowledge. Anyway, we're watching it, guys. Watch for the update. Be safe.